A pressure ulcer can be described as an area of localized damage resulting from the effects of unrelieved pressure, shear, and friction. Typically, pressure ulcers occur over the bony prominences. Body weight is transmitted through the skeleton, which results in higher pressures being exerted on the soft tissues near these bony prominences. This creates high pressure gradients that can cause significant damage deep within the tissues if not periodically relieved. Pressure can increase by up to five times as it leaves the skin surface and approaches the bone, creating injury deep in the tissue which may not be immediately visible on the skin surface. Avoidance of tissue damage involves mechanisms associated with both the blood and lymphatic circulation. When periods of immobility are extended, one or both of these systems may be affected. The capillary network consists of very fine vessels which deliver oxygen and nutrients to the tissue while removing toxic metabolites. These vessels are highly susceptible to closure under pressures as low as 6 mm of mercury at the venous end. When pressure increases inside the capillaries, Changes may also occur in capillary permeability. Either effect can lead to increased fluid leaking into the interstitial space. Fluid buildup has a knock-on effect by adding pressure on the surrounding tissues. Whereas the lymphatic vessels would normally open up to deal with excess fluid, when the tissue is under pressure, these fragile capillaries may be the first to collapse thereby preventing the removal of excess fluid from the tissue. When a patient is sitting, the effect of gravity is to pull the patient downwards. The skin does not move because of the resistance generated by the bed surface. However, the skeleton and deep fascia slide downwards and distort the soft tissues beneath the skin. This is known as shear. Although shear force, like pressure, occurs naturally due to the constant pull of gravity against the body, this can cause a significant reduction in blood flow to the skin as small blood vessels stretch, kink or tear. If these forces are not managed, for example by postural control or repositioning, vessel occlusion may be prolonged and localized areas of tissue necrosis may occur. In the clinical situation, both shear and pressure are frequently present. It is this combination which is particularly damaging and studies have shown that there is a significant reduction in blood flow when both forces work together. Friction is a superficial lateral force acting on the top layers of the skin. Friction damage is characterized by scuffing, grazing and or blistering of the skin and often results from incorrect moving and handling techniques. The likelihood of damage from friction is also increased when the tissue becomes macerated by exposure to moisture from incontinence or sweating. One further consideration is the effect of heat on the tissue, as even a very small increase in temperature can significantly raise metabolic demand for oxygen. In conditions where oxygen supply is limited, the likelihood of tissue damage may increase. The Nimbus range of alternating support surfaces from Arjo Huntley provide active therapy by regularly redistributing pressure away from vulnerable areas of the body. This action mimics normal spontaneous body movement by repeatedly offloading the tissues. This is also often accompanied by a measurable hyperemic response as vessels fill with oxygenated blood and temporarily dilate in what is known as reactive hyperemia. The unique waveform delivered by the active loading and offloading cycle of products like the Nimbus systems has been shown to aid the absorption of fluids and propulsion of lymph which can directly reduce the impact of the physiological factors critical in the evolution of pressure ulcers.